And welcome all to Mortals Watch the Day in this short presentation on Liverpool Sefton Park as featured in a collection of picturesque real photo tourist postcards dating from 1908 to 1912. Opened in 1872 to the perspicacious designs of noted French landscape architect Edward André, Sefton Park was, from the outset, the exemplary of a Victorian wonderland and a magnet for travellers, both domestic and international, offering some 375 acres of park and woodland, featuring a formidable mixture of oval, circular and peripheral pathways intersecting two natural watercourses and circumventing one enormous seven-acre man-made lake. Dotted throughout with follies, a waterfall, a deer park, villas, lodges and, from 1893, Mackenzie and Moncur's iconic palm house, Sefton Park was an oasis of calm in a morass of hubbub, being located just five and a half kilometres away from the centre of Liverpool and its teeming docklands and bustling streets. Real photo picture postcards of the park and its facilities were big sellers in Liverpool Emporia and within the grounds themselves, so much so that by the early 1900s, views of Sefton Park were recognisable throughout postal distribution worldwide. Examples are to be found in paper and ephemera collections of major world institutions such as the US Library of Congress and the British Museum. But with so many varieties in publication and circulation, photographers and publishers often had their work cut out to offer something different to prospective buyers and souvenir hunters. That was where the novel development of the framed picture postcard came in and why each of the following examples stands out. The first photograph, entitled The Bridge, Sefton Park, Liverpool, was published by Boots Cash Chemists in 1908. At this date, the Boots franchises were leading purveyors of chemical ingredients used for developing photographs, and some branches even operated their own photographic processing facilities. This Boots photograph of Sefton Park's Iron Bridge is taken from a vantage point within the so-called Fairy Glen, one of the most attractive, i.e. picturesque, spots in the whole of the Sefton Park grounds. An immensely popular twisting place for courting couples, as well as an important bicycle byway, the bridge the bridge was erected in 1873 to the designs of Lewis Hornblower, who had previously worked on the bridges and grand entrance to Birkenhead Park. The print is mounted inside a faux oak effect framing device with egg and dark moulding around the edge, which elevates the main composition. However, whilst frame and photograph appear to be separate elements, they are part of one and the same whole. The advantage of picture postcards such as this was that there was really no need to buy an expensive frame or album in which to mount the subject after the fact. Indeed, more often than not, material such as this was simply affixed to the walls of countless domestic interiors to be admired by their owners in much the same way as a cheap painting. The next photograph, published by Philip G. Hunt of London, is entitled Footpath and Lake Sefton Park, Liverpool, and also appeared in 1908. Hunt's business primarily lay in printing, but in common with hundreds of his contemporaries, he has recently turned to publishing a range of RP picture postcards as a way of supplementing his income. It is a measure of how popular Sefton Park was as a subject that this London-based entrepreneur felt confident enough to choose this delightful scene of children, almost certainly dressed in their Sunday best, paused alongside the park's northern tributary as fit for distribution and to set off the hole inside a faux rosewood frame with beveled inset. Intriguingly, this sepia photo print itself is overlaid onto the photograph of the frame, meaning the picture postcard is deliberately fabricated as a double layer. Children also feature, albeit this time feeding ducks, in the art publishing company Sefton Park Liverpool, a hand-tinted colour RP postcard dating back to 1908. On this occasion, offset by severe faux ebon frame with a golden or gilt effect egg and dart inset. Perhaps one of the most appealing of all the Sefton Park real photo picture postcards, thanks to the veristic handling of the greenery in the background and the reflected light in the water. This shot distills the idyllic calm and tranquillity of the park's original designers, hoped would be of the utmost benefit to its intended users. 
Finally, it would be remiss in any discussion of frame Sefton Park RP postcards, not to mention Raphael Tolkien's sons, Liverpool, the Lake Sefton Park, adapted from a photograph of a couple taking a stroll, first published in 1908, but not given the company's framed Charmette treatment until 1912. Tuck's full-colour photogravure picture postcards were luxury items, necessitating a complex manufacturing process prohibitive to most publishing rivals. Pioneers of the famous oilette process, whereby photolithographic reproductions, typically of paintings, received an additional glossy transparent layer on the surface, mimicking tiny brushstrokes. Tuck's Charmette series included trompe l'oeil frames painted by in-house or artists to resemble wood grain, often with decorative appliques attached to each corner, as in this example. With Charmette cards, only the frame borders received the additional layer of transparent ridging in order to keep the framed border distinct from the otherwise smooth surface of a photograph, thus rendering them eminently collectible and much sought after.